All right, so let's get into this discussion about really picking apart the existentialist ideas in BCB. Um, we'll also open it up so that we can start analyzing the comic from other theoretical standpoints, um, but I really want to try to move on to poetry as quickly as we can because poetry gets really, really fun. Um, if you'll remember, I gave you a couple of terms last time. Uh, dread, <clears throat> bad faith, and uh, authenticity, and despair. Now, the question for this piece, the question for the comic was, who is in bad faith? Who is feeling dread? Who feels despair? Who is being authentic? The actual answer to that question is incredibly complex, because it is quite possibly one of the trickiest of trick questions. The real answer is everyone everything. <laughs> uh, that's why I like it so much. Let's let's start with um, let's start with Lucy. Lucy, I think, is the character with the most dimension. She's running. Uh, she she's in a bit of a close competition with Paulo. We'll get to him in a minute. Lucy begins the story very much in bad faith. Right? She want she has feelings for Mike. You didn't. You guys didn't see this portion of the comic, but let me just lay a little foundation. She has feelings for Mike. She's like hopelessly in love with Mike, and yet she is abusive towards him. We don't really have much of an explanation for that behavior. Um, it seems mostly relegated to her Sundari status, the um, that kind of Japanese um, anime character type, but. As we start the story, she is confronting the truth. She is in the process of working her feelings out and being honest about it. Now, when she is in love with Mike but not wanting to admit it, when she is going through her abusive patterns, that is very much bad faith. That is self-deception. Uh, Lucy defines bad faith in the early part of this, uh, in the early part. Now, she moves from bad faith more to dread and despair. Um, dread, if you'll remember, is the feeling of inevitability. You know, you're, you're lying to yourself, but you're starting to become more and more aware of it. Um, I also, I had somebody uh, leave me a comment on my YouTube channel that I thought was absolutely awesome when he pointed out that there was a little bit of, uh, there was a little bit of an argument about uh, the definitions of these words. I'm actually using Kierkegaard's definition, and I need to go back and reread Kierkegaard to make sure that I'm getting these words 100% correct. But um, to respond to the person who commented, you're 100% right, and I absolutely love it when people mock me uh, on YouTube. You didn't mock me, but no, yes, please tell me where I'm wrong. That's really, really cool. Um, so uh, Lucy is confronting her feelings, and she's kind of in the process of working them out. That is dread and despair right there. She is, she's, you know, coming towards it, and she's, she's like coming to this point where she's accepting her responsibility. She's accepting the fact that she cannot keep running away from the truth of her feelings, right? So when we start reading the story, she's in that middle gap between dread and despair, not wanting to commit, not wanting to be honest, but getting closer and closer to that inevitable moment when you just cannot stop, when you, you just can't lie to yourself anymore. The dread and the despair lead to the authentic if, if you're growing in a um, healthy and human manner. Now, where it gets interesting is what happens when she's honest. Mike reacts to her in a very negative way. He is angry about her fe his feelings for Lu about Lucy's feelings for him. Now, we are going to have to take the focus off of Lucy for a minute. We'll come back to her, but now is a really good time to look at Mike. Mike is pretty hopelessly in love with Lucy as well. But Lucy doesn't treat him very well. And so he's going through his own internal process of trying to uh, work out the relationship. He's got a long-distance girlfriend. You know, it's funny because, like, this is a little bit of a tangent, but it's an interesting one. Long-distance relationships, in my humble opinion, are, in essence, bad faith. Because you're creating a relationship with someone, you're maintaining an intimate and uh, and affection-based relationship, 
on somebody who is not there with you. There is like a fundamental grain of insanity in that, right? And I know there are people out there who make long distance relationships work and God bless their hearts, but man, there is a fundamental function of bad faith that goes into the long distance relationship. So Mike is experiencing bad faith on a lot of different levels, but where it gets interesting is his reaction to Lucy. My, I mean, we was, it's been established through the story, especially leading up to this. And if you, you look really carefully, you can see signs of it. Mike really likes Lucy and really wants to be with her. And he's trying to get rid of her. Now, this is my favorite part of the comic. And one of the things that I think really substantiates the graphic novel as an art form. The breakdown scene in the chapter December... Holy moly, that scene is very, very well done. I've actually recorded several movies, uh, movies, <laughs> I'm Michael Bay up here. Uh, I'm, I've recorded several videos just discussing the scene, and every time I talk about it, I end up liking it more and more. And here's why. When Mike finally blows up at Lucy, a lot of people believe that he's being authentic. I think that's arguable. I think that you could look at Mike's behavior as potentially authentic because he's being honest with her about how much he hates her, right? And how he's, he's, he's basically uh, bringing her into his true feelings. But I would argue that there is a lot of evidence for self-deception there as well. Here's what I'll, and here's why. As Mike blows up, and starts to be starts starts to scream at her. Did you notice something interesting about the way that he looks and about what he's doing? He's crying. He is crying as he's divulging this intense emotional pain that she's put him through. He is literally crying. That shows a Deep internal conflict, right? That what he what this what he's doing right now in that moment is is very unpleasant for him, and is it's conflicted. There's there's raging raging emotion, but that's not even the full bad faith aspect of this. So many people fail to understand this about Mike's character. When people when people view Mike as sympathetic, and I understand viewing Mike as sympathetic, but there is a problem. Why does Mike blow up at Lucy? What is his real justification? Well, if you go back and look at the scene again, they were starting to warm back up to each other. They were actually starting to kind of be friends again. They were playing video games. They were joking. They were laughing. And Mike, Mike obviously felt a little bit guilty about this because you actually see his facial expressions at several, point, uh, several points. At this point, Mike is very much in doubt as to whether or not his relationship with Sandy, his long-distance girlfriend, is going to survive. Then he gets the text. He gets a text that says she's coming to visit him. His relationship with Sandy is confirmed, right? She's coming to see him. Just consider that for a minute. That's why he blows up at Lucy. But what did Lucy do in that moment? Lucy was actually trying to be pleasant to him. She was trying to warm up to him. Now, the reason Mike is so hideously steeped in bad faith is because he did not cut things off with Lucy. He did not blow up at her. He didn't, you know, take action against her until his relationship with Sandy was confirmed. That is really bad. And here's why. He's letting Lucy back in. Because he doubts his relationship with Sandy. He's keeping Lucy in this orbit because he's not sure whether things are going to work out with Sandy or not. That is a really bad thing to do to a human being. To have them around just in case something else doesn't work out. Mike is 100% not being genuine about his intentions. He's not being genuine about his emotions. He actually really loves Lucy, and he can't bear to get rid of her until he knows he's going to have a potential replacement for her. From my perspective, Mike is not being authentic in this moment. He is very much steeped in bad faith. Now, Lucy comes around, and 
responds in an amazing way to this, right? Mike verbally abuses her in that moment. And again, that's a little bit ironic because she's been pretty awful to Mike as well, which you kind of, you see some highlights of um, in this reading. It's not as focused as it should be. But Mike leaves his phone on the bed. At this moment, it wouldn't be a good thing, but you could really understand Lucy wanting to throw a monkey wrench into Mike's life at this point because he has just ripped her apart emotionally. But what does she do instead? Instead, she texts Sandy to say that she's getting out of the picture and that she has been harmful to Mike. So that actually goes and confirms their relationship even further. That action, picking up the phone and doing something selfless, it, as close to selfless as can possibly be said, that is a very authentic thing, where Lucy is trying to take responsibility for Mike's situation, for Mike's emotional state. And so, rather than being vindictive, she becomes supportive. Now, this comes at great personal cost to Lucy as she steeps further and further into depression later. As I said in the last video, authenticity is not something that you can manage and it's not somewhere you can stay. You shift in and out of it. It's, in, it's unstable. More than likely, you're going to start lying to yourself again. And you could get into a very interesting conversation about Lucy's behavior from an existential standpoint after December. Depression itself it seems to be steeped in bad faith because you're not being honest about your real value as a human being. But you're also running into an interesting problem as uh, highlighted by Frederick Nietzsche. At least I think it was Frederick Nietzsche. I'm going to have to go back and double check. I need to prepare for these videos a little more rather than just rambling like an idiot. But that one of the greatest expressions, it might have been Sartre. Okay, it's a quote by some dude. Um, one of the greatest expressions of human freedom is suicide. The choice to no longer exist is like one of the freest actions that you can take. But more than likely, what drives you to suicide is self-deception, right? You're not being honest about it. So from an existential standpoint, suicide is a very complicated concept that as Lucy has confronted all of her value, she's built all of her valuation of self, centered it around Mike, around the possibility of being with Mike, around keeping Mike around no matter what, without necessarily sharing her feelings for him and being honest about it, she has based her entire self-valuation on that. And what Mike has done in December is taken that away from her. Not only is he saying he's not going to associate anymore, but he does the very high schoolish thing of saying, I'm not going to be at the lunch table no more, and all you ain't go have no friends. I love that portion. It's so cheesy. But, oh my God, who didn't have that conversation with someone in high school? You and I go have no friends. It's, it's so ridiculous, but it's so realistic. So, Lucy is confronting the absolute worst possible scenario from existential crisis. Everything that she values is being taken from her, and now she's only left with herself. And she has a very heavy, heavy sense of responsibility that she doesn't seem capable of coping with as the comic unfolds. That's a pretty good exploration of Lucy and Mike from an existential standpoint. We'll leave it here. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about Paulo and his very interesting development. And uh, we'll try to wrap the comics up and try to, you know, put a pretty bow on the existentialist element. Start writing those papers. I'm anxious to read them.